drin. Yeah, yeah. Please sit down. Thank you. How do you pronounce your first name? Uttara. Uttara. Sir. Uttara, there are gaps in your uh, educational uh, progression. Sir. 2006, you did your 12th, and 2010, you did your detail. Sir. So, does it take four years long? Yes, sir. Or the program right? did take And four then years. from 2010, to 2014, there is a gap. What did you do then? So, 2011, I joined for my master's so, uh, in United States. So, after graduation in 2010 from my Bachelor of Technology, hmm. I, 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 was, I gave my GRE to go abroad for pursuing my master's. And I had to wait until hear back from all the applications. Mm -hmm. So, 2011 August, I went for my master's in the United States. Where? Which uh, institution? It is Drexel University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. So, why do you wish to join civil service? So, um, I, I actually went abroad to pursue my master's. That also gave me an opportunity to take a step away from home be part of and, uh, and see look at back, look back home and see and be proud of what and who are we are so and i also consider mm -hmm. myself as a spokesperson of indian culture in the small community i was in and then i also worked as an electrical engineer and that work experience also told me that i'm a person who derives job satisfaction from more so when i look back and analyzed and realized that i wanted to contribute Mm -hmm. And public services was one of the best options that I realized I could pursue. So now with your experience, your qualification, you have a holding a job or two lakh rupees per month. Uh, it seems rather unusual that you, after so many years, you will move into a government job. Sir. I think uh, your electrical engineering field is a very uh, vast field Sir. and offers tremendous potential. Sir, so, uh, I agree. It is a very uh, lucrative possibility that I had, and the pay was substantially higher. But I realized at the end of the day, uh, job satisfaction does not necessarily mean getting paid high. And I realized I'm a person who wanted to do more and know that my decisions and my job has an impact on the world around me. So um, the desk job <coughs> and the technical job, my passion was more than just that. That is, I wanted to contribute to the world. If I wanted to use my talent, I wanted to use it for the nation. Okay. Ms. Uttra, uh, you know, our equation with our relationship with China, there are a lot of tensions between <coughs> us, between <coughs> Now, one of the uh, issues is, of course, uh, relating to the CPEC. Now, what is our uh, grouse on CPEC and what is the strategic significance for China? So, uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a CPEC, India stand on it as that the proposed corridor passes through Indian territory okay. and therefore it becomes Fair a question enough. on our sovereignty. Then, like, then for China? So uh, the global world, in the world in the global world order, China is trying to make a, a position for itself, and it wants to be the next superpower. And strategic importance for China, CPEC, for China in this regard is it gives it more inroads into the neighborhood. And it also connects Chinese uh, uh, trade to takes it to the Central Asia and all the way up to Europe. So the penetration of Chinese investment, trade, and also their hegemony is dependent on CPEC. Yeah, plus the main issue which I was trying to elicit from you was that, you know, the Malacca Straits uh, through which they have to take all their food, etc. That is, the distance is reduced and the dependence on the Malacca Straits is uh, no longer there, right? Thank you, that sir. Is, that is the also very important issue. Sir. Now, on this, uh, on the CPEC, when they try to go through our territory which we claim mm -hmm. we only lodged a very weak protest. Mm -hmm. But when they tried to move into the Doklam area, we took a very strong stand. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Sir, uh, we depended on our relationship with our neighbor Bhutan and their security concern also came into for Who's security? Doklam. Bhutan security and at the same time our own. Because Doklam also gives proximity to China 
towards our Siliguri corridor. That's right. So that is the issue. See, sir. it's where it was of vital importance to sir. us. Sir. We put a strong, we put a foot down on that. We sir. said no, no question, and we sent in troops into that area. Uh, that uh, the CPEC, we have raised objections mm -hmm. to it, and uh, we sort of. Uh, no, China has also been blocking us in various places. On NSG, they have been blocking us, you know, the nuclear suppliers group. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Sir, I think uh, their argument is that to get into nuclear suppliers group, that, the, that we should be signatories to the NPT, NPT yeah. which we are... Uh, and they always say that if you want, if you want uh, to give it to India, then you must give it to Pakistan. To Pakistan. That is yeah. the other issue. Okay, fine. Now, you know, uh, Donald Trump's, uh, when the Israeli came, Prime Minister was there, he announced a peace plan. Why is it that it was outrightly rejected by Palestine? Sir, the West Asia peace plan as proposed by yeah. Trump is, uh, at the end of the day, it actually reduces Palestine into a, uh, into, in ge geographically and strategically, mm. it reduces Palestine into a mere state which has been reduced for the security purposes of Israel. And at the same time, it also asks them to demilitarize. So as a sovereign nation that they claim to be, it is completely not acceptable for Palestine. Yeah, and they gave everything uh, to Israel, yes, right? sir. full control of Jerusalem, right? Yes, sir. West Bank. Yes, sir. And of course, uh, no return of the refugees. Refugees. So those are the three issues on which the Palestinians are also equally very, very good. Sir. Okay, fine. Uh, have you heard of this National Investigative Agency, NIA? Sir, what, I... what is the role of this? Sir, um, I am aware that they do uh, investigate into sensitive cases and uh, provide uh, security <coughs> information and intelligence information for our okay. nation's security. Okay. Uh, there was this controversy uh, in Maharashtra called the Koregaon Bhima mm -hmm. controversy. Sir. Are you aware of this? Sir, yes. So what, why, what is this dispute between the central government and the Maharashtra government? Sir, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of this. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, Uthna. Hi, sir. You are a student of political science and international relations. Sir. So let me begin by asking you, have you heard of Harold J. Lasky? Sir, yes, I have. He's a political thinker. Yes, sir. So what was his political philosophy? Sir, I Politico cannot Political economic, me. if I may put it. So unfortunately, I cannot recollect Lasky's theory, right? Okay. He was a Marxist. Okay, economies mm -hmm. and believed in planned economy sir. or states. So I'll read upon that. Okay. Now let me come to international relations. Now India has had very good relations with Bangladesh, mm -hmm. Nepal mm -hmm. and Iran. Mm -hmm. But uh, all these relations have of late come under some kind of a strain. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the reasons behind uh, sir, uh, in, starting with Bangladesh. For Bangladesh, uh, the one struggle that India has is to treat our neighborhood, especially in small countries like Bangladesh, equally. So that, um, unfortunately, the perception of being a big brother is something that we need to work, especially with Bangladesh. Another problem is the Tista River water. So making sure that our state was Bangal and our priorities are also <coughs> matching Bangladesh. Tista water issue has remained unresolved for quite some time. Sir. I am hinting at a development, mm -hmm. recent development, Sir. which has put some strain on Indo-Bangladesh relationship. So uh, it could be the uh, the illegal migration that happens between Bangladesh to India. No, no. Sir. it's the CAA, okay, which sir. has caused some concerns. Sir. Okay, now come to Nepal. <coughs> So the growing closeness of Nepal, as perceived by India towards China, could be one uh, strain good reason for a strained relationship, and also and more specifically, yeah, that's that's a generic issue. But more specifically, uh, something was some territorial region mm -hmm. was projected in one of our maps, mm -hmm. which Nepal took exception to. So what is that area? Sir, I cannot remember that okay. right now. Kalapani. Sir. And what about Iran? Sir, uh, India had a civilizational relationship. At the same time, we were able to navigate our relationship with Iran despite sanctions on Iran, get yeah. exemptions from major power like United States. 
for Paris in 2018. We could not continue with that exemption and we had to stop importing oil from Iran due to US sanctions on Iran. And this could be perceived as a reason why uh, the strained relationship between India and Iran. Okay, good. <coughs> now, you have, uh, you must be aware of various insurgent movements yes, in various parts of the country. In the Northeast, two such movements have been, rather one, mm -hmm. the Bodo agitation. Yes, an accord has been signed, so there are indications that this problem will be behind our backs. Mm -hmm. But uh, apart from Ulfa, mm -hmm. uh, there is one more major insurgent movement mm -hmm. which is still active in the Northeast, mm -hmm. which is that one. And what is the current status of Government of India's negotiations with the insurgent groups? Sir, uh, is it the Naga insurgency that yes, is prominent right, in the world? Right. So, so what's the current status? So recently there was been an amnesty and uh, the Naga surrendered and there has been a proposal of an amnesty scheme uh, under which they surrendered. And, uh, no, I'm uh, afraid uh, Sorry, sir. Then I, I that's agree. about the Bodo agreement. Okay, sir. They have, yeah. Mm -hmm. With the Naga, mm -hmm. the major insurgent group there is the NSCMIA. <coughs> so talks have been concluded mm -hmm. with with this group. Mm -hmm. The details are not made known, okay, so sir. we don't know what, okay, what is in store. Mm -hmm. You are an exponent of Bharat uh, Natyam. Sir, right? yes. Okay. Now, east of India, which are the classical dances uh, which are popular? We have Manipuri. Yeah. Uh, we have um, that. Uh, that is all I can remember right now. Have you heard of Odissi? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank Sorry, you. sir. Thank you. are from Kerala. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Why has the Sabri Mala mm -hmm. come into so much of prominence? Sir, um, sorry, ma'am. Uh, recently, there has been, there has been a case in the Supreme Court where uh, certain the group did not want the entry of women into Shabrimala, but uh, it was also perceived as a, uh, as a confusion regarding letting the temple entry of women and also at the same time gender equality. So at any time, were women allowed to enter the temple? Um, I believe that during the case, there has been... Uh, ah, not during the case, say in the 1990s. Ma'am. Uh, I believe yes, at that time women have been allowed to enter into the temple. So what was the problem? Why now there's a ban on entry of women, not only uh, into temples, but mm -hmm. also in some of the mosques? Uh, um, at that time, uh, there has been a revival of the old culture where women will not be entered. And there was a ban on entry of women after that period when they were allowed to enter. And recently, there has been certain groups who, uh, prop who are proponents of women's rights who brought this up for okay. issue forward and said that women should be allowed to enter the temple. Gender should not uh, be a uh, ground there for religious discrimination. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you've studied in some institutes, as you said, abroad. Mm -hmm. We in India have some very good institutions, mm -hmm. educational, higher educational institutions. Mm -hmm. But they don't rank anywhere in the best mm -hmm. as we compare to the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Ma'am, I, I believe some structural reforms that are required to actually get into what the top one hundred. What are structural reforms? Uh, we should also, um, when you look at the top hundred universities, they have a very strong research focus. Yes, why so, is research? Anything else? Uh, I think the uh, the curriculum that is more focused towards the cutting edge technology could be another reason. Anything else? Faculty, infrastructure, libraries. I believe infrastructure is one major area that and we need also to one of the reasons is that they're also ranked on the diversity. Ma we don't have that in our country. Ma thank you. All right. Know. Now, uh, you've heard of the MTP? Yes, ma'am. Medical termination of pregnancy? Yes, ma'am. The amendments? Yes, ma'am. What can you tell me about it? So, the recently, the uh, limit of medical allowed MTP has been increased to 24 weeks. How does it help? It helps that uh, the earlier the uh, time, the uh, allowed time was probably not enough for any anomalies or any reasons for a medical termination of pregnancy to be prominent. So this gives more time for medical diagnosis and find out that if this is actually a genuine case for MTP. Anything else? 
Sorry. Unmarried women have also been allowed now under okay. this. Okay. Um, if I were to ask you, what could you do to increase safety of women in India? What would you say? What steps could you take? Ma'am, gender sensitization is the first thing that comes to my mind. How do you do that? Uh, in, 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 when it comes to employment, I believe making it mandatory that you undergo gender sensitization course for employment could be one step. At the same time, go into the schools, make sure that you have gender sensitization classes. What do you mean by gender sensitization? Actually, knowing that you must treat both gender equally, and at the same time, there could be some perceived things which you might have taken for granted. You do Don't not you know think that it's the first teach the young boys. Yes, ma'am. That is what I was trying to get to by saying to go into the schools and keep gender sensitization. Anything else we could do? Think of some practical things that could be suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, keep uh, better surveillance and patrolling mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and also having a women-centered uh, hostels and okay. overnight stays. That could be another option. At the same time, we have to empower our women. Let them know yes. that um, we can also move into creating. Um, martial arts or any kind of self-defense for the women and also more visibility to women who are actually and hurting speedy justice Spe definitely which is one of the most important yes mm -hmm. all right now we have lots of acts like the pcp and dti mm -hmm. yet the sex ratio is not improving in the country mm -hmm. why is that so uh, one thing could be the sun preference where uh, there is uh, unfortunately Indian culture has a preference for a male child so one and we are also moving towards smaller and nuclear families so if you have one kid there is more possibility to stop at that one kid and, and that thereby we do not have more female children all right okay thank you thank you Uttara, tell us what do you think are the main foreign policy challenges that we face today as in the changing world order, finding a place for us by taking everyone that we actually want, uh, who actually believe in us together. So finding that niche place for India at this time could be a big challenge. And specifics, if you have to give some specifics? Um, in my opinion, uh, we sometimes we are uh, shadowed by the economic cloud of China. And also we are also uh, brought and pushed into the quagmire of domestic politics. So if we focus on what we bring to the table, which is, uh, which is equitable and sustainable development, there's already showed that we can be a leader for Global South. Uh, we have always been the voice of the developing nations. So rather than focusing on just the economic or the investment part, we can bring that to the table. That is basically our civilizational value, that Vasudeva Kudumbagam bring everyone together. So I think that is what we can do. And of course, it's currently sponsored terrorism is Sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now we always hear that China supports Pakistan in various forums, various issues. Uh, what do you think are the historical reasons for this, for China supporting Pakistan, historical reasons and current interests? Mm -hmm. So historically China has always kept Pakistan as a way to deter or uh, distract India. We also have um, uh, border issues with them. So at the same time, they have always kept supporting Pakistan as an irritant. So India does not pose a threat to China's rise in the global world order. And uh, that is that the say that is right now. I believe there is a continuation of that policy where India's aspirations in the South Asia and in the near neighborhood and those aspirations sometimes come uh, in crosshairs with China's aspirations. So if we are preoccupied with our border issue in, uh, with Pakistan. Uh, China wants that to be at their strategic advantage. Did Pakistan play a role in improving China's relations with some other countries in the uh, past? Um, I cannot remember. Sir. Yeah, in the 70s, Pakistan played a role in bringing US and China closer. Okay, sir. And what is the current usefulness of Pakistan for China? Sir, uh, I think keeping India. But well, of course, you have mentioned that uh, yes. to contain India. Also, Pakistan comes as a very strategic player in the Afghanistan peace process for China. And considering that we could have, they could, have, if there is instability in Afghanistan, it could affect Chinese uh, borders and they also have their own inborn uh, in domestic terrorism. So I think keeping Afghanistan stable is right. important. Yes. Because China believes Pakistan has strong linkages with various groups in Sorry. Afghanistan and can be very useful. Uh, now, Pakistan, of course, has not been taking the almost enough credible action against terrorism. 
<coughs> what do you think could be the motivation of Pakistan not taking an action against terror and terror financing? Uh, one major thing is uh, India has already accept, uh, has officially accepted Pakistan terrorism state sponsored terrorism. So the fact that they stay relevant and on the global table, for example, one reason why Pakistan is so prominent in Afghanistan peace process is due to the tie they have with the Taliban. So they, it is very important for Pakistan to stay relevant, and because of that, they have vested interests in exporting terrorism. Good point because it improves their bargaining position also. So, Uttar, your name figures in an important epic. Sir. And can you tell us some characteristics of the character of Uttara in that epic? Sir, uh, uh, Uttara is from Mahabharata. She is the wife of Abhimanyu, who broke the uh, Chakra Vyuha in the war. <coughs> uh, one characteristic is Uttara was, Uttara offered to go with Abhimanyu while, and when, when she knew he was going into war, but Krishna prevented her from going because she was with child at that time. So that dedication that she had is one of the characteristics I can remember right now. Thank you. Thank you. What is uh, the importance, the strategic importance of Afghanistan to Pakistan? Uh, I believe Pakistan uh, sees... No, be brief, be brief. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Pakistan is, uh, has a strategic importance as a, uh, for their strategic depth. They believe that what? for strategic depth... Yes. That what does that mean? If India opens war at Pakistan's eastern border... Yeah, good, good. You got it. That okay. is the crux. Thank you, sir. It's okay. There are two instruments of uh, foreign policies, hard power and soft power. Yes, sir. What do you think is more important? Sir, it should be a balance of hard power and soft power. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, in the final analysis, what matters? Um, we can create hegemony only by balancing both hard power no, and soft power. I'm not power. talking about hegemony. You can defend yourself only with hard power. In sir. the end, that is what matters. Okay, sir. All right. Do you see any recent incidents, instances of India using its hard power? Uh, recently, the Balakot attacks Balakot. and the red carriage. Anything else? Mm -hmm. What is the hard power? Uh, does it mean only weapons, I mean, military or something more? Uh, no, sir. It actually means putting your foot down and not using any any uh, pleasantries or any co uh, coercion. It is actually making, your, your, it's not just using the force. You are also, more? Um, force is one. What? The possibility of using force could also be by military threat. You mean threat? Yes. All right. Anything else? Uh, sorry, sir. I cannot remember. All right. Coercive action is also a hard power. Sir. When you coerce someone, mm -hmm. because you know that this power is more powerful, it can okay. cause harm to us. Sir. That is also hard power. Mm -hmm. Now, you see any uh, India trying to use hard power anywhere? Apart from non-valent way, in a non-valent way? Can I remember right now, sir? What's happening with Malaysia? Sir, yes. Uh, they, uh, Malaysia did not, uh, Malaysia have made mm -hmm. some re refractory statements regarding our so CA amendment. India is denying it, uh, like, it denying our, its uh, export from uh, yes, of farm oil. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. trade could also. This is how India is hitting back. Sir. Mm. Now, there are two major <coughs> ambitious announcements of the present government, central government, as far as the rural sector is concerned, or as far as India is, con India is concerned, one is that they will double farmers' income mm -hmm. by 2022. Sir. Now, what does the budget contain which, if at all, mm -hmm. would give an indication that yes, Mm -hmm. They are serious about achieving this target. Mm -hmm. So there has been an increase in the budgetary allocation up to 2.83 crore, 2.83 lakh crore towards agriculture. Mm -hmm. oh, towards? Sorry, sir. Towards what? Towards agriculture. How much is the increase as compared to last year? Uh, I cannot remember that figure. Hardly any increase. Okay, sir. No. Another thing. What they did was they had a budget. Mm -hmm. Then they had a revised estimate in which they brought down. Okay, sir. 
So now they are giving a false impression, oh, we have given you so much. But if you compare it with the actual mm -hmm. location, so that's not a very valid argument. Okay, sir. Anything else? Um, one thing that comes to my mind is the proposal to have fruit trains or dedicated uh, railway lines to connect the market to the port. These are all hollow declarations. Sir. How where is the money to establish a line? When will that line will come? It's like the real, real bullet train sir. going on and on. Yes, sir. You talk of a budget allocation which say sir. yes, this will start. Okay, sir. Giving support to the no, there is none. Okay, sir. Mandrega has been cut down by nine, yes, nine thousand. You know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Only PM Kisan has a very small percentage of increase. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the second is five trillion economy. Mm -hmm. What are the <coughs> in the budget? Mm -hmm. Where does it indicate that we are poised or we are going to be on the path to five trillion? Uh, the budget is uh, seen as a pro-investment. The objective, no? Definitely, sir. Uh, it has the due to the um, exemption for the industries from the dividend uh, division uh, distribution tax. They expect that there would be more investment and it would actually boost the economy. This is, sir. Uh, this ex this budget is a damage control exercise. Sir. It is not poised for growth. Sir. Read it quite definitely. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll definitely do better. They are worried yes. that the economy might sink mm -hmm. and inflation is rising. Mm -hmm. So they are desperately trying to stem the rot. Okay, sir. I'll do better. Read it yes, sir. Now you have done something in electrical engineering, uh, etc. What is the installed power generation capacity of India? Sorry, sir. I cannot remember. What are India's uh, renewable energy targets to be achieved by 2022? Uh, we expect to generate 175 gigawatts from renewable sources. Out of which uh, solar would be? 100 gigawatts. 100. Sir. Now, total renewable, mm -hmm. what have we achieved till now in the last five years since this program was announced? Mm -hmm. In 2015, this program was announced. Mm -hmm. So five years have gone. Mm -hmm. Now they, they are left with only two and a half years. Mm -hmm. How much have they achieved out of this 175? Sir, I do not remember the exact figure, but I'm aware that we have a long way to go to achieving this obviously, task. Obviously, obviously. The exact number you, you, I cannot you recollect. Just, you guess that I'm going to no, I ask you a question from that. <laughs> Only 80 gigawatts Sir. out of 175. Sir. Only 80. Sir. We have not even covered half of it. Sir. All right. Has the Uday scheme Succeeded? It has, um, we still have to wait a little bit more to actually say it has succeeded or not. But it has actually. No, it has failed. Okay, the losses are mounting. Mm -hmm. Desperately they are mounting. Sir. Read uh, details you read yourself. Definitely, sir. Is there, uh, have you read the budget? Not in deep, in depth, right. sir, as you might have already understood. I didn't well, I'm going to ask you a question which I don't think you'll be able to answer, sir. but I'm still going to ask. Sir. In the budget, there is something about foreign policy initiatives, mm -hmm. allocation. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to detect those? Uh, if, uh, as far as I can recall, we have reduced our, uh, our uh, funding to many play, many countries. Except uh, Nepal, I believe. No, Nepal we have Sorry, reduced. Uh, and Africa. One more. Yes, yes. but you, you, just you, one you, you, you got the, you got yes. it. But uh, Nepal and Africa both we have reduced. Yes, I'll bet. Yes, I'll bet very good. Refine very my good. Very good. Very good. Last question. Supreme Court recently has given some landmark judgments. Can you recall anything which affects you, me, everyone, every educated person? Um, sir, I'm no. still thinking about the Shabrimala judgment which... Shabrimala doesn't about. affect me. I'm sitting in you in Delhi or UP. Mm -hmm. How does it affect me? I cannot recall at this moment. It's a judgment on internet. Sir. Access to internet is a fundamental right. Fundamental right, sir. Yeah. All right. We close the interview. Sir. Uh, now I'll give you a little feedback. Definitely.
by and large, you have handled the interview nicely. Thank you. Sign a very. Uh, uh, yeah. You're Can right. I? Yeah. You're okay. Thank as you, many sir. thanks as you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been able to handle the interview nicely. You have Thank you, sir. A good expression. You can express yourself nicely. Probably it's the effect of your living in America, <clears throat> where they emphasize conversational uh, style. Okay, yes, sir. We have tried to frame our questions mm -hmm. largely keeping your biodata in mind. Mm -hmm. And you will see that therefore we have asked you questions on foreign mm -hmm. because that's your also international relations is the yes, subject. Yes. Then we have asked you questions on constitution mm -hmm. issues like uh, for sh shortage of time I have not asked you more questions on constitution mm -hmm. issues but that is an important. Third is Kerala is your area where you should prepare yourself very see. nicely. Yeah. Kerala has some very, very uh, strong points like HDI index, mm -hmm. etc. So, fourth is electrical, uh, engineering, and all. Sir. Power sector is ailing. Mm -hmm. If anyone tells you that, uh, yeah, it's just healthy, it's not healthy. Okay, sir. Uh, I'll leave it to you to, to, to read on it. Sir. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, economy, India's economy, mm -hmm. budget, these are some of the areas. And your hobbies. Sir. And finally, current affairs. We have asked you about <coughs> women issues, foreign policy challenges, mm -hmm. India, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, China pollution, mm -hmm. why Pakistan supports terrorism, mm -hmm. etc. These are all Sir. very relevant issues from your point of So, office for Pardiji. Or uh, yeah, Eltron solutions it would be uh, information technology or engineering? Engineering, sir. Engineering. Okay. Uh, that is all I would like to say, otherwise you are doing very well, just you, strengthen sir. your knowledge. Sir. The area which my esteemed friend told you in Nepal is Kalapani, mm -hmm. is it right? Yes. I'll read read about this dispute, uh, Nepal is making a lot of trouble about Kalapani. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll read. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.